Hello folks and welcome to Four Season Backpacking. Please subscribe for the latest outdoor adventure videos. Hi there folks, it's Richard, your host for Cross Britain Way. On day two, I just wild camped here last night, right by the um, seawall. As you noticed, I'm on, well, I'm on the wrong side of the seawall. I'm on the side where the sea would come. Um, but the weird thing is I am a couple of kilometres away from the sea probably. And um, there's the seawall. But... Yeah, I can buy pylons, unfortunately, as well. There's my tent. Just pack packing it away, getting ready to hike. Um, so this was about 10 kilometres out from the... or 9 kilometres out from the um, start of um, the hike from Boston. Um, this was the best spot in those 10 kilometres um, to camp, actually. Uh, and it's this, this has been here since... Probably since Roman times at least. I think I think it could be even older than that to be honest. You've got the sea wall close to the sea, this is more of a sea backup I guess. Or it could just be the ancient one. But it definitely doesn't look like the sea's been here for some time. So it's weird walking along a sea wall when you got like farming fields right on the sea so the side of the sea and obviously on the other side as well that's oh, a beautiful morning I was camping just down there it seemed to be the best place it was out of the way from the houses houses couldn't see us from down there uh, Macmillan Way to, to the Macmillan one to Abbotsbury from Boston I camped along one of these uh, dikes and um, there was uh, lots of uh, horses that visited my tent. <laughs> starting to get a lot colder in the morning mornings now. Well, starting to get cold in the mornings now. Now it's like past mid-August. Um, And now I'm actually walking along the first, the new, well, the newer sea defence wall, I guess. Or it might be another ancient one, but um, this is the first, would be the first line of defence from the sea. And as you can see, still can't see the sea, but this is classed as the coastline. So I'm guessing the sea comes up here quite often. And those over there look like salt, basically look like salt marshes. So if you're walking around Britain, um, on the bits you can do, uh, this will be part of the path you take if you want to stick to the uh, tidal thing I was telling you about and this will also be, I'm guessing, part of the England coast path that's going to go right around England um, I would have thought because um, there'd be no other way to get across there, there's no bridges or anything like that so um, you're going to have to do it sort of like officially walk around the coast like I said and walk to the um, well I guess I'm guessing the coast path around Britain is not going to be strict in that it's going to avoid it's going to go around all the tidal routes so I'm guessing there's going to be bridges for it like on the southwest coast path so I'm going to guess this will go to the nearest bridge and you'll cross, cross, cross it but if you want to obviously do as I say and actually walk around the coast of Britain as much as possible you've got to go to where the tide ends um, yeah I think it was a good idea camping where I did camp probably the best spot to be honest so after this it's going to be going through loads of farms again pretty much the only places are probably going to be out of camp or in trees of course when you get the hills and stuff you can camp on top of hills out the way but here there's just no hills, so hide around the dike, that's what you have to do. It's a bit like uh, the Somerset Levels as well as like this, because that's all like, to, that's why it floods a lot. They, they got uh, the dikes like this, and pump stations, and 
starts off in Kerry, is it? Castle Kerry, that's it, Castle Kerry, which is the train station you would get off at at Castle Kerry if you were going to go to uh, Glastonbury Music Festival. So it starts off in uh, Castle Kerry, which is a beautiful village, which is a bit of a walk from the train station actually. And um, there's a few shops there actually as well to stock up on before you start. And um, that's a really nice hike. It's beautiful. Going through the Somerset levels, I loved it. I love, I've loved all the Macmillan ways. They're, they're, they're so beautiful. They're not like wild hikes, really. More his, history. History, sort of like loads of history and stuff like this. So like you get like this. But there's loads of opportunities for camping. And yeah, there's always somewhere, hopefully. Just left the sea defence wall. Now I'm walking along another another path. Um, hopefully not overgrown. It seems not too bad at the moment. As I said, we've not had much rain, so I can see this path would be a nightmare otherwise. It's getting a bit overgrown here, but not too bad compared to what it could have been. It's that time of year. It's walkable. It looks like I've no choice. I've got to walk through here because because um, that looks like it goes to someone's backyard. Great. Still not as bad as it could be though. At least it's not sharp shit. I don't know if those are uh, the fake stinging nettles, ones that look like stinging nettles, and they're not. I should know that by now, but they've not stung me yet. Ow, that's what I don't like. Okay, so it wasn't too bad. I've just come to this uh, farm shed, and it's got um, a memorial to um, a crash site uh, from an RAF plane. Um, so there was uh, one guy killed here and he was killed after bailing out from his uh, aircraft which was in a steep dive and the aircraft crashed in the field alongside this building so yeah the, the plane crashed just over here in 1953 so that's quite a sad little story they put, even got some flowers there for him so that's quite nice and it's by this uh, farm here And I've just got to Mandike Road. And from Mandike Road, I'm going onto this road here, which is gonna go across, um, I think an A road, it's not the motorway, yeah, an A road. Yeah, A road, dual carriageway, A road by the looks of it, or just a busy, very busy A road. And across there is a village, and apparently there was a, um, oh, this is Ely's Lane now I'm on. Apparently there's a post office with a shop over there that should be open where I can top up my water which will be great because I need to get some more water. As you can see it's a little bit overgrown here so unfortunately because there are some sharp shit there I'm gonna have to can I walk through that way? No, I have to walk this way a bit. I'm gonna have to walk through this way. 
and get to here. How bad is this? Sort of sharp, sharp crap. I just stopped at this, um, this is like a little nature pond here. It's quite interesting. It's got loads of warning signs, so they've been kind of amusing me for a bit. All these little warning signs I got around here. Um, I took a few pictures of them. And uh, this is my bag set up for charging stuff. With a, a solar panel, so I've got a 40 watt panel here. And because um, I've got a lot of things to charge up, my, my GPS watch, my phone, my GoPro, um, yeah, the Canon G29X Mark II, got that to charge up as well. Uh, um, it's pretty much the first village really, all the others have been just a little um, houses, so uh, yeah this is the first village with a shop and it's got a um, premier shop which opens at 6am I think to like 8pm. I'm sure that's what it said. It was either 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. or no, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. or 8 a.m. I'm not sure. But um, anyway, yeah, this is my this is my bag, so it's pretty big. going to the hut. By the way, if you keep walking along, ah shit, got this shit on my leg, this spiky shit. Ah. Right, if you keep walking along the uh, the Cross Britain Way path past this, there is actually an entrance to it where you can actually go through. You don't actually go through the um, Archery gate, which I've just found out. So hopefully it's open after all that. And it is. Wow. You know what? I could have slept in there before. I may well have slept in it. Oh, mate. That's a good place to rest, even if I don't sleep in it. But I think I slept in here before when I, I think this, also um, the other Macmillan Way path goes along there as well. So I think I have slept in here before. Um, they are great places to sleep actually, but I'm, but it's just too early. So I'm gonna have to keep on going. Would have been nice to sleep here, but just way too early. Uh, yeah, you get bird lookouts all over the country and usually they're open so yeah just put the mat on the floor and sleep right great spot but unfortunately gonna gonna have to go so let's come straight back out onto the path okay resume GPS So, next town, Donington, and that's got a co-op supermarket, I believe. 
I don't know if it's the same Donington for the um, Heavy Metal Music Festival. Is it called Download or something? I can't remember. It was it was Donington, wasn't it Donington or Monsters of Rock or something? I don't know. But now it's just called Download unless they've changed the name again. Or even if it's still going, I don't know. I just left the village of Donington and I can tell you that has a, for supermarkets uh, I saw co-op and um, there's a not just co-op um, just about to go under the railway bridge um, on the dike section ah, mate it's got to be somewhere I can camp up here relocating I put my tent up where it was just a herd of cows really not that cows are dangerous they were with calves though and uh, even with calves normally they're okay um, problem is if they get spooked they run into the tent and just totally flatten the tent um, and me and um, this is a path and it looks like a four-wheel drive vehicle thing as well along here so um, if a car comes along a vehicle or someone on a bike they'll just go running straight into me straight into the tent so I'm going to show you where I've decided to camp by this pump station over here I think it's going to be much safer it's across see look they get spooked and run. Look how fast it's running. That goes straight into my tent. If I was. So I've camped in the herd of cows. Even like um, the last tiger I did in Hebridean Way, I camped in a, a field with the bull. It was looking pretty angry. But the field was big enough. Whereas this is like a narrow, a narrow sort of like dike they're grazing on. So there's just nowhere them to run apart from running to my tent so it's too just too risky right now here's where I'm gonna camp across here relocated my tent here by a pump station because there's a fence stopping the cows coming in and attacking my tent so I think it's a lot safer seems okay I don't think they mind me camping here I'm sure people have camped here before it's not hard to get under there. There's no sign saying keep out, so just keep it clean and I think I'll have a good night's rest now. Brush, think I'll brush my teeth. I'll probably make some in the morning to eat. So I just had two sausage rolls, so yep. I'll, I'll make some, I'll brush my teeth now, I think. I would like to advise people not to world camp where there is farm cattle. It can be dangerous. 
Avoid livestock and crops while wild camping.